just arrived in Glasgow Airport and I'm going to go and see Darren. Oh look, there's a coffee shop. I'm going to go and get some coffee in a wee minute. I'll just go and get checked in. Hello, Glasgow Airport. Good morning. So Dan, you're, you're graduating today. Where are we're Faye? Chester Uni. Chester University. Brilliant mate. <laughs> Where'd you get that jacket, mate? <laughs> you can't, mate. Right, one. Angus. Thanks, Sarah, to you, guys. Yeah, I'm going to do a bit of research on the road. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, here's Hugo. Hello, Hugo. <laughs> oh, man, these boys are awesome. The one's going to be so jealous. Oh, oh. 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 I did she? Yeah, she's jealous. She is jealous. <laughs> That's a funny face, you go. So, Angus on the left and Hugo on the right. Yeah. Awesome, Joe. And how are you doing? Oh, <laughs> You don't put me straight she on. Loves <laughs> With the bags under my eyes. <laughs> Morning, Vicar. That's Wayne. That's Darren. Dan's graduating today. Yeah. Jim, Jim's using Jim's using it looks like I'm back on gear. <laughs> he's lost that he's lost that much weight. Lost about a timber. Living at Darby. Cycle of right now. Wayne, who are you? Um uh, Darren's my mentor. Uh, been in Derby for about a year and a half, I had to come out of rehab. Um recovering from crack addict. <laughs> now Christian. Superb. And Darren, Darren, what's happening with you today? I'm graduating. What are you graduating today? Theology, master's degree, mate. What did, what Distinction. Did, what did you, so, mm. master's degree? It's mad at me. No, I couldn't solicit for you. Can you can just say something? Aye, mate. Look at that quiff. Oh, that. <laughs> oh F Finlay, if you ever get to see this, you're right, rotten dial. <laughs> Big really, Finlay really Summers. Big Finlay Summers. Master's degree? Yeah, mate. It's been hard work, man. Yeah. Six years. I've got another question. Where did you get that jacket? <laughs> it was an old, an old, it was an old, an old pair of curtains in my, in my mother's house. My wife's a bit handy with the old uh, sewing machine, so I slipped her a couple of mob, you know what I mean? She made it off me. Wayne, would you wear that Stash jacket? Um. So you can pull it off, mate. Do you know what? Do you, know what? You, you need panache to wear a jacket like this. Jim's no got panache. <laughs> A wonderful thing is happening today, and that is that Darren is buying Wayne and I lunch. Aye. Do you know what an even better thing that's happening? But each one of us shouldn't be sitting here today because of the lives that we've lived. It's pretty yeah, remarkable, isn't it? It's a miracle. You know, I was it's just a modern day miracle. I was just thinking that it's amazing, mate. That's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing what God's doing, Wayne, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so going to Darren's graduation today. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Proud as punch. What Jim does he know is he, 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 he's getting treated to lunch, but it's only at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing stereotypes. An urban an 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 boy who's an Anglican vicar now. I know, it's an absolute joke. Amazing. And and I've just been we've just been at Darren's house and got a wee cuddle with Angus and Hugo. Mm -hmm. Two new wee sons. Wait, three weeks. Three weeks old. Amazing. Three weeks old. Absolute amazing. <laughs> so I'm looking a bit dishevelled. 
Actually. Right. <laughs> We're on our way. <laughs> Right for a tune boy, no for the, for the scheming or that. <laughs> Darren took us out for lunch, this is sophisticated dining. <laughs> oh, forgive me. Yeah. Jim's idea, no mine. Bishop Darren, Bishop Darren. But on, on Jim's it says Mono Brown. <laughs> Alright master, how are you doing mate? Can you get a picture of me now? Who's this? This is Isabel, this one was a tutor at St John's but she's now... Hello Isabel. Dan, give me 10 seconds on bus spirituality. Bus spirituality is a place where people withdraw into themselves, within their own minds. A, people, a place where people um, open their imagination to the future, um, worry about the future, dwell on the past. It's a place where you can be somebody else, where you can dream, where you can watch out the window, where you can people watch, where you can imagine things unimagined. Listen, God is in the world at work. All we are trying to do is help people to connect where God is already at work. So when you come onto a bus and you're sitting on a bus and you see somebody just thinking, just, just looking at the window, like, ask God for an opportunity. And you know the God that we worship before is a God who's involved in people's lives long before we ever get there. So for all you know, you could just be stepping into something that God's already trying to do. I mean, so ask them a question, ask them how their day's going. Ask them if you can pray for them. You never know what will happen, mate. I remember about 10 years ago when I became a Christian, you know, I'd be on buses and just stand up, say to people, listen, we'll be 15 minutes before the next stop, and I just, I just need to tell you what Jesus has done in my life. You know, just sitting on the bus now, driving back to you know, graduation, just wondering, you know, well, where's my boldness going, man? Where, where is that confidence just to get up and do that? You know, I'm quite good on one-to-one -one speaking to people, but you know, what has, what has happened here is as Christians where we don't feel the confidence and the boldness of the Holy Spirit, just to stand up and just to tell people what Jesus has done. But you know, I really wish it would come back. Where's my Holy Ghost boldness to stand up in buses? Do you, think, do you think that when you become more educated that you lose some of the radical edge? You, know, Is there a potential? You, lose this, you use the simplicity. The naivety. You start to critique. The, 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 you, start, you start to critique your, your own practice. We've moved beyond that. Our mission, our missiology and our ecclesiology has got to a point where we've made it all sophisticated. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, where's, where's the simplicity of you standing up in a bus and saying, Oh, well, people, I know you don't know, you've never seen me from Adam, yes. you don't know where I come from, you don't know nothing about me. And I just feel like I have to tell you about what Jesus is doing. We believe in a God who transforms people's lives. Let me tell you about your own story. Thanks for listening. Have a great life. I'll be praying for you. Do you know what I mean? What's, what's difficult with that? That's a simplistic question, isn't it? So we're on a bus right now, Dan. <laughs> and there's usually a dozen people. You going to give us a wee sermon? You lost your confidence. But perhaps I have, Jim. Perhaps I have. Do you know what I mean? Anglican is in pain. No, I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe I've lost my Pentecostalism. Maybe I've, maybe I've lost the spirit. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to the worst? 
something amazing about just things like helping people onto a bus with a pram. Do you know see, what I mean? See that? That I think that's it. I, I talk about Jesus to people all the time, Jim. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and I don't think that getting up on a bus is going to do any harm, but I think the way that I do it now is more fruitful because it because it's about relationships. Whereas if I stand up on a bus and, and talk to Jesus, maybe do you know what I mean? Because I'm such a relational person and, and really interesting hearing stories, not just telling stories, but hearing somebody else's story and seeing how stories connect. If I was to stand up in a bus, you don't really get an opportunity to do that, but that's still, but you know, they warrant me not yeah. being able to just do it. Do you know, I think, like, well, Brian McLaren says, people are more ready than we realise. Exactly, mate. So, 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 for example, that lady over there, that lady right there, yeah. she did have a crap day. Yeah. And, and I could just go up and just say something about how God really stepped into my life and made a difference and, and helped me get out of that crap. I could really connect with her. Yeah. I don't need to hear her story. Yeah. She knows her story. Yeah. God knows her story. God knows my story. God will connect the stories. Yeah. So we don't want to have a, a, a model that we apply to the masses in the sense that um, we assume that everybody is going to reject what you have to share with them. Somebody might just need what you have to say in that moment. And, and, and who are we to judge or decide that that can't happen? Because we believe in a God who's at work in the world before we ever get there. So all we are doing is bringing God, naming God, Bringing the name of Christ. Paul says, No, you worship an unknown God. It's just about putting a name to that. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that can tap into your pain. He's the one that can heal your pain. He's the one that can, that can make a difference. He's the one that can get you through this. I'm not talking about rescuing you to that. He's the one that can just get you through it. Wouldn't it be great just to get through? Do you know what I mean? That's bus ministry. Bus ministry, mate. <laughs> Wait, it's all awful, man. But listen, bus ministry is damn how he's a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this man. Love this man too. It's been great. Beautiful sunny afternoon in Chester. Heading back to Glasgow. For you then, is are you an Anglican and do you feel called to Anglican? The priesthood is about becoming all things to all people that you may win some. It's about being a shepherd, um, being a servant. It's about equipping the church for works of service. It's about teaching. It's about nurture. It's about standing in the gap. It's about speaking with a prophetic voice against power. It's about being invited into places, um, invited into the world, into the secular space as a guest. It's about relinquishing power. Ah. I have 100% conviction that, um, that the God who created the whole universe, who knew about you before you were formed in your mother's womb, you know, before you were knitted together, um, that God loves you, knows everything about you, and he wants relationship with you, and he wants the relationship to develop. And in that relationship, he wants to heal you. And all the wounds and scars that we pick up by being born into a profoundly broken world, uh, God wants to then begin to heal you. And so that then you can partner with him to become a part of his amazing plan of helping him to heal the wounds of others. That's the message of the gospel. And it's, and it's in Christ that that happens because this God who created the whole universe who spoke the stars into being. This was this was a God who doesn't stand apart from the suffering and from the sin that, that, that darkens our world, but there's a God who enters in to the mess with us, to meet us, so that we can meet him, and then so that we can help him, and that, so that we can meet people, other, so that we can meet then meet God and other people, and help them to, to come to the conclusion that they're God's children, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That every single one of them are God's children. And if we just knew that, if we knew that and believed it and believed that we were loved, like that there was nothing we could do to win his love. Do you know what I mean? That he loves us. He loves us just as we are and knows we should be because we're never going to be as good as we should be, Brendan Manning says. If we believed that we were profoundly loved, 
by the God who created the whole universe, a God who comes to us in Christ, what would the world look like, Jim? What would the world look like if we wow. we yeah. got that, mate? Yeah. If we just got it, and we and, and not only that, but we've seen it in others. We've seen that every single human being was God's child. What if we, we believed that everybody was God's child? No, the kingdom would come, mate. The kingdom would come, and and we would see God more in yeah. ourselves and in others. That's the gospel, mate. So are you hopeful? Sometimes, because I'm, the thing is, you know, I'm still dealing with my own scars, mate. Do you know what I mean? We need to name it, because it's only in the naming it, it's, it's only in the, the naming it, can we acknowledge the reality of it. And, and it's in the, in the lament that the cathartic work of the spirit, do you know what I mean, does its deepest work, mate. And when we lost. Um, when Joe had the ectopic and um, we lost what was our second baby, Joe kind of nearly died, it was quite traumatic, kind of shook our faith. And, but um, Mark and Gail Phillips sat with us for probably a full day actually, just sat with us. No, well, didn't need to speak. And at one point uh, during that day, Mark asked if he would like, um, if he would like us to pray for him to pray for us and he just started shouting and swearing to God man like like a priest shouldn't he <laughs> do you know what I mean like a priest shouldn't he but it was the most holy prayer that I've ever heard and and the Holy Spirit came into our living room and we wept do you know what I mean and it was a, it was probably one of the deepest communions I've had with God um, somebody prayed the prayer that we couldn't even say Spirit interceded for us. It was like God was screaming out to God actually. God was screaming at himself. Do you know why have you forsaken? And uh, do you know what I mean? And that was the beginning of a, of a healing for us, Jim. Do you know? And so we, about a year ago, Joe and I kind of set up a wee grief cafe that kind of tries to embody some of that. Do you know? And there is something about you create a safe space to, to rage at God and to get angry at God. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Some, something tells me God enjoys it. Maybe, maybe enjoys the wrong word, but God, God needs that. God, God longs for that, for that rawness. Oh, don't be ready. Have a safe trip up the road, man. Right. Loads of love. Right. See, you See you later. See you later, mate. So that's me. It's been a long, long day. Brilliant to see Darren and Wayne and. I'm about to celebrate graduation, but I am shattered. Here we are, good to be home back in Glasgow. <laughs> hey, how you doing bro? How's it going mate? How are you? You alright? Good, good man. Trip? Brilliant trip. I'm coming in. Good. Welcome back home. Desmond. It's good to have you back mate. <laughs> I was worried about you. I thought they were going to keep you down there. Oh. And I literally just pulled up and you were, hey. Um, and then you texted me and said, oh, yeah. This man is a legend. Hey, not at all. That's your family doing it. <laughs> Oh, I'm shattered, mate. Yeah, how was the trip? Was all right. It's been good. Tell you all about it. Indeed. But um, just to say thanks and heading off, mate. My pleasure. Absolutely.